Welcome to iLecture Online. Our next example is kind of a classic example. Here's a car driving down the, down the highway at 24 meters per second and goes around a corner all of a sudden sees a deer 100 meters away. Takes him about 1.2 seconds to react to the fact that deer is there, applies the brakes, begins to decelerate at 6 meters per second square. And the question, of course, is will the car hit the deer or will the car come to a standstill in time so not to hit the deer? Again, we're going to solve this using the graphical technique. We're going to graph a velocity versus time graph. So there's our velocity. Horizontal axis is the time. And so the car is moving at 24 units are meters per second and doing so for the first 1.2 seconds. 1.2 units here are in seconds. And so this area right here, let's call it area one, is the distance traveled by the car before the car applies the brake. Then the car continues to move by decelerating at six meters per second square. So we have a constant acceleration that's negative. And then we don't know what the time is. So let's call this uh, interval T2. We do not know what T2 is. And we also, we call this A2. And we do not know what A2 is because that's the whole question, right? Will the car travel more than 100 meters or not? So what we want to see is what is A1 equal to? What is A2 equal to? Together, A1 plus A2 should be less than 100 meters or the car will hit the deer. We know that the slope here, the slope, which is equal to the acceleration, is equal to minus 6 meters per second squared. All right. So what we're going to do is find A1 and A2. A1 is a rectangle, so it's equal to the height of the rectangle times the width of the rectangle. The height would be 24, and the width is 1.2. So 24 times 1.2, 24 times 1.2 is 28.8, and that of course would be meters. So in the first 1.2 seconds, the car continues to travel 28.8 meters. A2 is the distance traveled by the car while the car is slowing down. That's a rectangle, so it would be one half times the base times the height. And in this case, we realize we do not know what the time is, so therefore we don't know the length of the base. So what we can do there is we can go ahead and graph an acceleration versus time graph. So an acceleration versus time for that portion of the problem. We know that, oh, let me move my axis over here because we have a negative acceleration so there would be the acceleration there's the time and the negative acceleration of minus six meters per second squared so the units are meters per second squared and the area here in this case let's call this area three that area represents the velocity change from when the brakes were applied until the car stops so time three, uh, time two here, we'll call this again time two, this is the same time by the way, so that's what we're looking for, we're looking for the time. So we know that the area here, A3, is equal to the change in velocity. So we can say that A3 is equal to the width times the height, and the width would be the time that we're looking for, so A3, now notice here that we went from 24 meters per second down to 0 meters per second, so the change of velocity would be minus 24 equals the width would be the time that we're looking for, and the height would be the acceleration, which is a minus 6. Notice in that case, we can solve for time, so T2 is equal to minus 24 divided by minus 6, which is equal to uh, a positive 4 seconds. So by using a second graph, an acceleration first time graph, we were able to solve for T2, plug that then into our first graph, and then we can go ahead and plug that in here. So that's equal to one half times the base. The base is the time, which now we know that's four seconds. And the height of that triangle is 24. And so that would be two times 24 or 48 meters. So now when we add those two together, A1 plus A2, a1 is the distance traveled before the brakes were applied. A2 is the distance traveled while the brakes were applied. When we add those together, we get 76.8 meters, and that is less than 100 meters, so the car will not hit the deer. 
So notice that using a velocity versus time graph and then also using acceleration versus time graph to find the time that we can plug in here, we can solve the problem quite handily. Again, this graphical method is a great method to solve these kind of problems. It also gives you a good visual picture of how to do so.